Hi everybody, this is Shiva Viram signing in. Today I am going to explain you the second session of alternators and the objectives of presentation are we are going to discuss synchronous reactance, synchronous impedance of an alternator and when alternator is loaded what are the different vector diagrams we are going to get depending upon the loading condition whether the load is resistive, inductive or capacitive and what are the different tests that we are going to conduct on alternators like open circuit test, short circuit test generally they are abbreviated as OC test and SC test and regulation of an alternator whenever alternator is loaded the terminal voltage will be dropped due to certain parameters like uh, the resistance voltage drop and the leakage reactance voltage drop and also the voltage drop due to armature reaction so armature reaction is nothing but uh, the effect of armature flux on the main field flux. So these things we are going to discuss in detail in the coming slides and the last one is synchronous impedance method of determining the voltage regulation of an alternator. So we are going to see all these things. First of all let me explain you synchronous reactance. Actually the synchronous reactance is the combination of uh, two different reactances that uh, happen in an alternator. One is due to the leakage leakage of flux in the armature winding which is represented by XL and another one is uh, armature reaction reactance. So whatever reactance which is going to be occurred because of the armature reaction that is considered as XA and the combination of these two XL and XA which is uh, equal to XL plus XA that is considered as synchronous reactance. So one is uh, <coughs> so the leakage reactance another one is uh, armature reactance armature reactance due to the armature reaction effect of armature flux on the main field flux that results in XA and combined together this is going to give us uh, synchronous reactance XS hence XS can be written as <coughs> XL plus XA but as we know that XA varies with power factor of the load because the armature reaction depends upon the load power factor whether the load is resistive, uh, inductive or capacitive. So this is the general vector diagram that we consider uh, to represent the different parameters like uh, terminal voltage, uh, the current and uh, all the drops. Let me explain you here. This is uh, the terminal voltage V, this is the current lagging behind the voltage by an angle of phi. So here for example we are considering an inductive load that is the reason why uh, the current is going to lag the voltage by uh, an angle phi and the drop I into RA due to armature resistance we are going to have this drop I into RA. This will be in phase with the current hence it is drawn parallel to this or and next thing is I into XL. I into XL means it will be a J component that is the reason why it will have 90 degrees leading with respect to I, the drop I into RA. Similarly I into XA will be in phase with uh, because these two are reactance components hence they will be in the same phase. The combined effect of uh, IXL and IXA is considered as I into XS. The vector addition of V I R A and I X S. This will give you uh, the total uh, voltage no load induced in P naught. And here one more uh, intermediate parameter we are going to get when the alternator is loaded we are going to have this is the induced DMF which is the combination of uh, uh, the terminal voltage I mean the vector addition of uh, V I R A and I into X L. Under no load condition this will be a little bit more compared to this uh, induced DMF by a value of uh, uh, this I into XA. This is the general uh, phasor diagram that we consider to represent all the parameters uh, of uh, an alternator. So this is the total voltage drop in an alternator which is uh, given as I into RA plus J I into XS. And put together, if you consider 
This combined effect of armature resistance and uh, the synchronous reactance is known as uh, uh, synchronous impedance represented by Zs. So it is the combined effect of uh, armature resistance and uh, the total armature reactance that is synchronous reactance Xs which is the combination of Xa and Xl. Now finally we are going to have uh, the synchronous impedance as equal to Ra plus J into Xs ohms per phase. But generally when you consider the armature resistance will be very much so small compared to Xs hence you can have uh, the magnitude of Zs as equal to directly the synchronous reactance in majority of the cases. Now let us see what happens when the alternator is uh, loaded. This is the general thing that we observe whenever uh, a particular equipment or uh, device is loaded obviously the voltage is going to be dropped due to certain uh, parameters like resistance and reactance. Similarly the same thing happens here also. Here we consider certain uh, parameters that is E0 which is equal to the no load EMF uh, means under no load condition when the alternator is not loaded whatever induced EMF we are going to have in the armature that is considered as uh, E0. Obviously this will be the maximum value and uh, E is the load so it is the induced EMF when it is loaded obviously this will be a little bit uh, less due to the armature reaction effect and it is uh, uh, this on load induced EMF is uh, vectorially less than E0 by uh, a value of I into X. These things we have seen, uh, we have discussed previously. Now, let us consider V is the terminal voltage and uh, the impedance is uh, given as Z square is equal to the magnitude of impedance is given as Z square is equal to RA square plus XL square and I is the current armature current per phase and phi is the load power factor angle. Now let us consider resistive load that is unity power factor and this is the phasor diagram that we are going to have. Let me explain you this phasor diagram. Here we are going to take I as the reference vector and as we consider unity power factor both voltage the terminal voltage and the current will be in phase. You can see I and V are in phase with each other. So, the vector I into Ra will be in the same direction. You can observe this is V and I into Ra. The voltage drop due to armature resistance and I into XL and I into XA. This will be 90 degrees leading with respect to this I Ra because plus J. Plus J always leads to plus 90 degrees in uh, anti clockwise direction in the complex plane. So, obviously, uh, XL and XA. Uh, drops will be 90 degrees leading with respect to I into Ra. So here this is I into XL and the vector addition of V, I Ra and I XL that will give you on load induced EMF E and if you consider this I into XA the armature effect also armature reaction effect also that will give us uh, uh, the no load induced EMF E0. So so that's about uh, the vector diagram when you consider unity power factor. And now let us see uh, for inductor and capacitor loads also that is lagging and leading. Now here this is uh, for inductive load. Here this is uh, the voltage and current is going to lag behind uh, by an angle of phi because we consider inductive load here. All the, this the diagram already we have seen previously. I into RA will be either in phase with I or uh, parallel to I. So we have drawn the vector I RA parallel to I and after that this is uh, uh, 90 degrees leading I into XL, I into XA. All these things will be the same that we discussed previously. The only thing is the current is going to lag behind and E is the resultant of this is on load induced EMF is the resultant of V, I RA and I XL. Similarly E naught is the resultant of V, I, R, A, I, X, L and I, X, A. Similarly, for leading power factor, if you consider, so here you can observe this is uh, the terminal voltage and current I is going to lead by an angle of phi here. Uh, now, 
we draw i or a parallel to i this is uh, something different from the previous one so because uh, the current is leading here so we have to represent i or a parallel to i and similarly this is 90 degrees with respect to i or a i xl and i x a and similarly e and e not both are same as we have discussed previously so these are the different phasor diagrams that we get whenever the alternator is loaded these things are uh, uh, very important and uh, easy to understand also if you focus carefully now voltage regulation uh, this is nothing but uh, uh, the variation this parameter is going to tell us the variation in uh, the voltage of an alternator from no load to a particular load at which we have to find out the regulation value and always this is expressed as a percentage of uh, some voltage that is full load voltage or no load voltage generally it is going to be expressed as for alternator uh, the voltage regulation is going to be expressed as a percentage of full load voltage so here it is defined as the rise in voltage when full load is uh, okay the same thing that we have discussed here and the percentage regulation uh, is equal to e not minus v that is the difference of voltage from no load to full load divided by v so express it as a full load voltage and as a percentage so we have to multiply this by 100 so it is explained very clearly in this slide e not minus v is the difference and the difference of arithmetical difference we have to consider here the arithmetic difference not the phasor And one more important point thing here we have to consider is if the load is uh, uh, capacitive that is for leading power factor loads sometimes there is a possibility that the terminal voltage uh, will have more values than that of the no load induced EMF. So because of that the regulation can be negative uh, in for capacitive loads. So these are the different curves we are going to get uh, for different types of loads. This is for lagging power factors. We are going to have grouping characteristics, and this is uh, when the power factor is unity. And you can this is the terminal voltage on y-axis we are going to consider. You can see for leading power factor load uh, when you consider we are going if this is uh, the uh, actual no load induced EMF. Sometimes we are going to get uh, the terminal voltage more than the uh, actual no load induced EMF. So this thing is going to happen only for leading power factors. Now it is the time to discuss the different tests that we are going to conduct uh, for alternators. As we have uh, discussed open circuit test and short circuit test uh, generally abbreviated as OC test and AC test. So these two tests are very much essential in order to find out the regulation of an alternator. First open circuit test, as the name itself is going to tell us, we are going to open circuit the armature terminals and the test is going to be performed uh, for different values of uh, field current and we note down how much voltage is going to be induced across the armature terminals per phase and we tabulate the values and uh, draw the graph corresponding to we are going to get the open circuit characteristics of uh, an alternator as simple as that uh, let me explain you this here this is the circuit diagram uh, which is going to illustrate uh, the open circuit test that we conduct for an alternator here the field is going to be excited by a separate DC supply this is the armature we are going to have. A voltmeter is going to be connected across uh, any one of the phases. And when the DPST switch is closed, double pole single throw switch is closed, the DC supply will be connected. Here in order to vary the DC supply, we are going to use the variable resistor. And initially this will be in the maximum position so that uh, no field current will flow through this. So the excitation current or the field current will be minimum or zero in the at the beginning. So when the field current is zero, obviously no voltage is going to be represented. Hence the curve is going to start from zero. And slowly as the resistance is decreased, the field current is going to increase. Uh, thereby, the voltmeter is all the value of voltage, uh, phase voltage is also going to be increased. So slowly it rises and it becomes maximum at one particular point where the core is uh, where the field is going to be saturated. 
so something like this is a bh curve we are going to have uh, so here the open circuit characteristics are drawn between uh, considering the field current in amperes in uh, x axis along x axis and the open circuit voltage along y axis so that's about the open circuit test and next one is short circuit test the name itself is going to tell us in this test we are going to short circuit the armature terminals uh, uh, and an ammeter is connected between any two lines to measure the current passing through it so let me explain you the test that we are going to conduct here uh, onto the field side everything will be the same we are going to have uh, an ammeter which is connected in series with the field winding to measure the field current and onto the armature side we are going to have all the uh, three lines or three phases are going to be short circuited and an ammeter is going to be connected in any one of the two phases to measure the current so this is the short circuit current in the armature and this is the field current and by varying this uh, uh, rheostat again we are going to have different values of uh, this short circuit current with respect to the field current and when the graph is drawn considering field current on x axis and uh, short circuit current on y axis we are going to have uh, the scc that is short circuit characteristics so this is how we are going to perform the test uh, regarding the short circuit test of an alternator so here we uh, conduct the test generally considering um, the exit i mean 1.5 to 2 times so almost all one, uh, 150% to 200 200% of uh, uh, the value of full load current so we see that the short circuit current is going to reach that much value so we can consider we are going to consider that now let us see the regulation of an alternator there are so many methods uh, by which we can uh, calculate or evaluate the regulation of an alternator like uh, uh, synchronous impedance method uh, zpf method zero power factor method mmf method uh, like that different methods are there but here we are going to discuss the synchronous impedance method uh, for which the open circuit test and short circuit test uh, data is very much essential so in order to determine the armature resistance uh, uh, we conduct the general uh, vi vi method volt ampere method so by applying volt ampere method we can measure the armature resistance uh, very easily and once armature resistance is uh, noted down <coughs> next thing is we are going to conduct open circuit test and we plot uh, the open circuit characteristics and similarly short circuit test data will be considered and uh, let us uh, we, we have to plot the short circuit characteristics also and once uh, the open i mean we have to consider these two on the same graph considering uh, open circuit data open circuit test data and the short circuit test data so these are going to draw on, on a common field current base just now i had told you so let me explain you here this is the open circuit characteristics drawn between considering Uh, field current along x axis and uh, open circuit voltage on y axis so we are going to get this one and similarly this is the short circuit characteristics that we have drawn here considering field current on x axis and uh, uh, short circuit current on y axis so once we draw <coughs> these two characteristics for a particular value of field current say this one is the field current we have to note down how much open circuit voltage is there and how much short circuit current is there we have to note down those values and the ratio of the open circuit voltage to short circuit current that is going to give us uh, the value of zs that is synchronous impedance so let me clear you let me explain you one once again so once we plot the open circuit characteristics and the short circuit characteristics for a common value of field current we have to note down the values of i mean we can, we have to fix the field current as same and for that value of field current see here we have to note down the values of uh, open circuit voltage and short circuit current that ratio is going to give us the synchronous impedance already we are aware of armature resistance and we are aware of uh, zs that is uh, uh, synchronous impedance and we can easily find out the, the xs that is synchronous reactance by using the formula square root of zs square minus rs square by using that impedance uh, uh, method
So you can go through all this content uh, which is going to explain the same. So here ISC in the short circuit uh, ZSC is uh, defined as EOC divided by ISC. So which is going to give you the synchronous impedance and already we have evaluated the armature resistance uh, from the armature BI method or volt ampere method. And from this data we can find out the synchronous reactance using the formula Xs is equal to or Xs square is equal to uh, Zs square minus Rs square. Uh, Xs you can calculate and when you consider the square root of this uh, value. So once you know the Xs and the Ra you can find out the regulation by using uh, the phasor diagram here. So this is the phasor diagram that we consider uh, here. Uh, let us take I as the reference, current is the reference uh, one and as the load is inductive in nature that we consider uh, here, uh, voltage is leading and uh, if this is I, I or A will be in the same direction. So this is I or A and this is our I axis that is synchronous uh, reactance drop. Now we need to find out the vector OD here. So we give some letters alphabets here O, A, uh, B, C and D. So here regulation is uh, nothing but I mean the difference of voltage first we have to find out. Means we need to find out the vector length uh, OD and the length o, uh, o this particular from O to this particular point is V. So here when you consider a right angle triangle O, D, B. So if you consider the right angle triangle O, D, B this vector length OD square is equal to OB square plus BD square. Again OB can be written as OA plus AB. So OA is nothing but V cos phi. So you can observe from this diagram if this is V and this is phi. OA will be equal to V cos phi and AB will be equal to IRA. So this vector OB is now is equal to V cos phi plus IRA. So one uh, side that we have got for this rectangle triangle and similarly when you go for BD this length will be so if this is V cos phi obviously this length will be V sin phi. So this length we have got as V sin phi and this length is I axis. So the total length DB now is equal to V sin phi plus I axis. And we can calculate once we know the values of OB and BD, we can find out the value of OD as equal to square root of OB square plus BD square. That is V cos phi plus IRA whole square plus V sin phi plus IXS whole square. So let me show you that. So as I told you, OD square is equal to OB square plus BD square. Uh, this is Pythagoras theorem. The hypotenuse square is equal to side square plus side square. Finally, we have got E naught square is equal to V cos phi plus I R A I into R A that is armature resistance whole square plus V sin phi plus I axis whole square. And this is for inductive load. For inductive load, we are going to have plus sign here and for capacitive load, we are going to have minus sign. So this is going to be V sin phi minus I into X. This is the only difference we are going to get for capacitive load. Hence generally we are going to consider plus or minus. So positive sign is for lagging power factor and negative sign is for leading power factor. So from this formula you can find out the value of E naught and you can find out the difference E naught minus V. So that will give you the uh, regulation value E naught minus V by V into 100. That is how we are going to find out the regulation using this method that is synchronous uh, impedance method. <laughs> now this is uh, uh, the significance of synchronous impedance. Actually this impedance should be less but uh, uh, what actually it is going to indicate is uh, smaller values of current under short circuit condition of an alternator. And with lower values of excess uh, stability limit uh, is going to be increased. Voltage regulation is uh, improved and machines with high values of excess will have difficulty during parallel operation due to small value of synchronizing power during synchronization of alternators. So these are certain things that we are going to have uh, with respect to the synchronous impedance. 
and these are the general uh, questions which are going to be asked in the examinations so this is uh, the first one is a problem related to the calculation of uh, uh, emf so here we are going to uh, we, have, we have been given the data of uh, power factor and also the terminal voltage v armature resistance is given synchronous reactance is given so we need to find out the line value of emf uh, generated by using the formula simply you can find out uh, e not is equal to v cos i mean e not square or e not is equal to under square root v cos phi plus i r a whole square plus v sin phi plus or minus here it is lying power factor hence we have to consider plus only v sin phi plus i x s whole square and one important point to remember here is uh, we have to consider all the things as page values so here the terminal voltage is given 11 kilo volts as it is a star connected machine this 11 kilo volts is to be considered for phase volt phase value so 11000 divided by root 3 you have to take so these are certain precautions you have to consider and directly application of the formula you get the value and uh, define synchronous impedance these things also we have seen earlier and regulation of calculation of regulation by synchronous impedance method sometimes Similarly, what is meant by regulation of alternator? Variation of voltage from no load to full load. That is nothing expressed as a percentage of full load voltage. Uh, that is being considered as a regulation of an alternator. And how we are going to conduct open circuit test and short circuit test for uh, alternators. So that's all for uh, today's session. I once again uh, request you that your feedback is very much uh, appreciated uh, and also please subscribe to my channel uh, to watch more useful videos thank you very much this is Yeshua Bhairam signing off